Asian Wars, you know, you line up and protect each other. And it's, well, they're getting picked off, and Braddock got mortally wounded at this Battle of Monongah. He, he's dying. Uh, and the news article I have, it's in the Annapolis newspaper, and after it talks about the generals expiring, it said, young Colonel Washington, who would have been 23 then, young Colonel Washington came, came off unhurt, having two horses shot from under him and four bullets through his clothes. Now, that's in the newspaper. That's not hearsay. So the point is that uh, somebody was looking after this guy at a young, at a young age, and, uh, and we know that. And he was raised up, and he, he did these uh, marvelous things, but he always knew who to credit for his achievements, and that was uh, divine providence. That was God. They were all deeply religious men, our founding fathers, and a lot of that's been wiped out of our history, you know, which is too bad, because that's why I like collecting their letters, to yeah. show that. I've got a letter of John Adams where he, he says, I don't care if you're a, uh, an, Ar an Armenian or a Catholic or a Protestant or whatever. He says, as long as they're Christians, I wish to be numbered with them all. You know, yeah. makes it real, real, uh, real and I've got a letter of Jefferson where he talks about his last prayer, being that uh, we, the beneficiaries of the revolutionary generation, will, uh, will continue to preserve the freedom that we've that was won by the revolutionary generation. Mm -hmm. So I mean, they were all very religious people, you know. But yeah. we've tried to leave. We tried to not teach our kids about that. And we've lost so much of that. And that's yeah. what I love are those letters like that. And uh, but you're right. There are other things. Uh, well, we oh, get to, we get to Martha. Go so back to Elvis. So <laughs> we get we get to Martha. I didn't tell the story. I didn't tell it quick. I'm sorry. That's all right. And that is, you asked me to tell about that. And George Washington would pull him out again to you know to amend the um, Articles of Confederation, okay, 1787. <laughs> well, they're not amendable because uh, you know, these warring factions fighting in the Congress. So Washington very reluctantly, out of a sense of duty, heads up this Constitution Convention. And they decide to throw the whole thing out and start again. Well, he was so determined not to get that leaking out that he actually nailed the window shut in uh, Independence Hall by that time. It was called the Old State House. And it was a horrible hot summer with insects and flying and everything. And these people were dying in those buildings, you know, trying to do the, in the building, trying to do the uh, Constitutional Convention. Eventually, they, of course, uh, of course, were able to do it. And we believe, as Latter-day Saints, that those men were raised up to do that. Okay. But uh, you have to kind of read past the lines because they went through a lot of suffering getting that thing uh -huh. done uh, in a lot of different ways. I've got a letter from uh, um, um, uh, Jerry, Helbridge Jerry, written back to his uh, wife at home, saying, you mistook my meeting by way of my lodgings. I meant that my being here is very uncomfortable. He yeah. said, had I, how I, had I known what would have happened here, nothing could have induced me to have come. I mean, you know, we talk about our divinely inspired. But he didn't want to sign the Constitution. He didn't. But he served as our fourth vice president under it. <laughs> Died yeah. in office. Yeah, so Madison's vice president. Uh, but anyway, Washington, one of the things they decided was the states have got to quit minting money. That was one of the things. That's got to be the central government. They're so uh, concerned about looking like they're setting up a king or something in a central government that's really strong, but it has to be stronger than the articles were. Okay. And so one of the things they took away from the states is the ability to coin their own coins. Uh -huh. And so that meant that the federal government from now on, from 1787, had to mint all the coins. Well, that's a nice idea, and they passed it, but the problem was that the government at the time had no copper, silver, or gold, you know? to make coins. So the first uh, coins were, were designed by uh, Ben Franklin. They were known as the Franklin or Fugio cent. They had no copper to make them. They were big cents about this size. Huh. So they uh, they finally found copper by using the copper bands that held the powder kegs. There's one behind you over there. They held the powder kegs together huh. that the French sent us during the war. Uh -huh. So that's how we made our first coins. That was 1787 and it said Fugio and that had it said which means in Latin time flies and it had a sundial underneath that time flies and then the model the first model on the first u.s coin was mind your business and some people feel we ought to bring that one back yeah you know and on the back franklin had a chain with 13 lengths you know and in the middle we are one well that was a nice you know i mean i don't know if the united states has been one more than uh when the main went down or pearl harbor or 9-11 or kennedy assassination we're usually not one very long Okay, we're the only nation in the world I know that elects uh, a, its leader by a national uh, vote or poll, if you want, and then we take a poll every month thereafter to see how much we hate their guts. Right? That's 
the United States. Other countries just revolt and you know change the leadership. And <laughs> we they, don't do they that. Assassinate. Yeah, yeah, that's the right. Romanoffs, All the time. Yeah, that's the way they do. Well, of course they had no no copy. They didn't have any silver. They wanted to mint a silver coin. So they came to Mrs. Washington, and uh, a lot of people don't give her the credit she deserves. Martha and the women don't get the credit. Uh, they, I think the new histories are going to change a lot of that. For instance, most Americans just think Martha sat home at Mount Vernon, you know, uh, sewing something or whatever, you know, little old lady left at home. She followed him around in almost every battle. She was there in that big tent they have at the Smithsonian. That's why George had a belt was for his wife and him, so they could have a place that could be moved from battle place to battle. She was under fire, too. And uh, exactly. she also, uh, you know, uh, serviced the troops that were uh, wounded and other things wow. on the battlefield. Yeah. So she wasn't just sitting at home doing nothing. She was out there with her husband. Right. And uh, he loved, they loved each other very much. In fact, one of the things historians uh, don't like Martha for is she destroyed the 300 or so letters between the, the two of them, you know. And she thought she got them all until uh, they were remodeling for the new museum a few years ago. And they moved a cabinet. I guess it had been moved in 200 years and they found a letter of George to Martha. And in that letter, she exp he expresses his love for his dear wife. So we've got at least one now. <laughs> it's her flag, well, but she missed. She so fell down and defended the cover. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, uh, but at any rate, uh, Alexander Hamilton, the first Secretary of the Treasury, and Thomas Jefferson, the first Secretary of State, were ordered to try to find some silver, okay? I made, made coins. And they came back to Mrs. Washington, to Martha, our first lady, first first lady. And they knew she had a big silver service, and they asked, do you mind if we melt your silver service down to make our first coin? What else coins? did she give? She already given her husband. Yeah, and so she agreed to do that. Wow. And I think she deserves credit for this. And, and you uh, have the one half dime. It was a half dime, D-I-S-M-E, and they, it was a French word for, that became dime when they dropped the S the next year. But the first spelling was D-I-S-M-E on the coin. Half dime, they call it, or dismi, if you want to ruin the French, uh, and it became the dime when they dropped the S the next year wow. uh, from then after, but the 1792 half team um, was, uh, in other words, the, the predecessor to the nickel, five cent piece out of the silver, a little dinky thing. Um, and I've seen it. You took you've seen it. I brought it. I loved yeah, it. I brought I it. the story behind it. It's and some amazing. people think that that's Mrs., that's Martha's, uh, was the first lady liberty, because it looks a lot like her, you know, the portrait oh, on the coin. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, and then it was so tiny that the uh, the motto had to be abbreviated, so you got, you got lib, liberty, pair, parent of sci, science, and in industry, you know, this is around the outside. And then uh, it's got United States with a real scrawny, it looks like a blue jay on the back, but that was the first idea for a, for an eagle, you know, yeah. a little tiny, it was a tiny point. And uh, President Washington, his first uh, annual message to Congress said, we've made a little start on the coinage. We've minted some half themes or dimes, and uh, they minted 1,500 of them as the record. Uh, and they they think there are about two to three hundred of them still around. So that's You've one of those. Got, yeah, and it's we, one of those. I, I think they're neat. Yeah. I think that that's probably got to be the rarest thing that you have. In your it's life. one of the neatest things that we've got. I've got a couple other. I started out coin collecting, and I got robbed a couple of times. In fact, we knew the second time the guy that stole my solar dollar collection was a friend of Mark's, my brother. But the cops weren't interested in going after crimes like that, so we never got any, anywhere. So that's when I decided after it happened twice, I think that kid only did it once, but it was my silver dollars, uh, that uh, we uh, almost caught him going out the door with him. But anyway, right, that's another story. But uh, then I decided, you know, coins are not safe. I'm going to get into paper. It'll be safe, which it was until I met, you know. Hoffman. Hoffman, yeah, then everything changed. Mm. But uh, so that's how I got into paper. But that's in essence the story of how we got uh, our uh, our first silver coins and uh, and our copper coins, mm -hmm. and uh, you know they had to improvise. And I think um, you know another interesting thing is Martha's letters. I've got one letter of Martha's, real short, to Tobias Lear, who after George's death, who was in charge of taking charge of Mount Vernon, her overseer. Mm -hmm. and he's just giving a couple of orders, you know, follow and get things done. Her letters are ten times rarer than George's. And that's true of most of the famous women in history that I know of. Mm -hmm. uh, Marie Antoinette, I've got a signature of hers, but there's ten Louis, her husband, 
over one of hers. Of course, they both lost their head on their job. But, uh, you know, and uh, you look at uh, Josephine and Napoleon. You know, there's a Napoleon letter over here. Oh. I've never owned Josephine. She's ten times rarer than Napoleon. I wonder about that uh, years ago. Why are the women so much rarer than the men? Well, one thing is a lot of them weren't educated, but, but I'm talking about the ones that knew how to write, who right. were educated mm -hmm. like these. And uh, I've come to the conclusion, you tell me if I'm wrong, but my theory is is that who saves this stuff? Usually the women outlive their husbands, they and they do. save it. Mm -hmm. And my thought is, do you think they want anybody reading their material? They don't care after they're dead if you read their husbands. Yeah. But they don't want them reading yours. Now, maybe I'm wrong, but that's kind of my, my theory of it. <laughs> At any rate, they're much rarer than the men. And I don't think they wrote fewer letters. I just think there's fewer of them that survived. Right. But Martha was a great first lady. And Abigail Adams, she was fantastic. And, and we didn't get to really meet Martha Jefferson because she died so young. But, um, uh, you know, uh, Dolly Madison saved the Constitution and the Declaration and Bill of Rights. When and the you have some of those. House. I've got Dolly's signature and Abigail. And I, the, one I, the only one I don't have is Martha Jefferson. I've never seen it. Uh, I've heard there are a few letters of her, but I've never been offered one. So as a collector, do you, is there... Do you have this network, these people, you, you just, well, like, like you just said to me, if you yeah. find a Sundance letter, let me know. Oh, absolutely. You bet. Because so, so you're likely you to run into somebody that might have because one. Because I'm so, yeah. doing mm -hmm. a documentary and movies and books right. on books from Sundance. So, so it, it's just like, is there a database? Is, there, is it just word of mouth? Well, it's How mostly word of mouth. There are, uh, there are certain, uh, you know, like the American Booksellers Association, um, uh, which I'm a member of, they do put out um, lists of dealers and people that deal in certain things. And manuscripts are really small. It's a small number of people. And they used to be, I used to know probably every manuscript dealer, dealer in the country. Now, uh, because of uh, eBay, it's hard to know yeah. who's dealing what. And uh, I don't buy much on eBay because a few, come time, I've been burned a few times on eBay. And, okay. uh, and it's well, easy how, to, like, there well, like or? for instance, on, I, I did get back into coins briefly on eBay because it made some things easier. You put them in a safe. <laughs> yeah, and uh, there was I bought a set of uh, of standing Liberty quarters one time. It was a really good deal. which should have tipped me off. Uh, it was like fifteen hundred dollars for a complete set. It's a lot of money still. Yeah. But they should have been twice that. And uh, I rest I Western Union the money, which I shouldn't have done, and it was lost. And they couldn't track and you it. You never got no, the coins. No, I never got anything, and they think it may have gone back to Italy somewhere well, or somewhere. Join, join uh, the, but it the happens. I've, I've, I've got, I've got a lot of those. Like, yeah. I had a complete set, one of the rarest ones, of the re-signed Curlin notes. Uh, that was all the ones mm -hmm. that uh, Brigham Young uh, took to Utah after the Curlin Safe Society went belly up. And Joseph Smith proph prophesied to hang on to these because they'll be as good as gold. Well, mm -hmm. they were. that was fulfilled by Brigham Young out here when they traded. They re-signed them out here, Brigham and Heber C., I can ever see signed right over Sidney Rigdon's signature. Mm -hmm. uh, and they reissued 256 notes as our first currency means uh, of exchange. In Utah. Yeah, and I've, I've got one or two of those notes now, but I had a complete set, every one of them. Mm -hmm. And I traded that from 1895p silver dollar, which is the only one I was missing. Turned out that was a fake. Mm -hmm. It had been altered coin. But right. it was before, it was back in the 80s when we didn't have, you know, the scientific information and stuff to back it up. It looked good, mm -hmm. you know. Right. And I bought it from a dealer. I should have known he had a handlebar bar mustache that so he was a <laughs> was a crook. Lash, But I didn't uh, didn't know it. So uh, Al Russ, the coin dealer, a friend of mine who, who uh, managed the show that time in '84, he was trying to help me get my money back. Never happened. We got the FBI involved. We got the Secret Service involved. It's a long story. I told a little of it in my book. Uh -huh. But the thing thing that I laugh about now, I didn't even end up with the coin. The coin was taken by the Secret Service. Which, is over counterfeits because they said it's now a counterfeit coin. So I even lost the coin in the process. Because it's figured, a cookie, they, they yeah. haven't scalded it. I, I imagine <laughs> somebody, somebody's got that on their belt at the CIA. Uh. But uh, uh, anyway, it really kind of turned me sour on the government for a while. Yeah. Uh, but uh, the funniest part of that whole story, if there's any funny part, is that my good friend Mark Hoffman was trying to help me get my money back. <laughs> <laughs> He's ripped me off ten times as much as, <laughs> as oh, that one. Right. Well, anyway, we could go on and on, but that's a little I bit about know. the collecting. <laughs> and, and that's just this is what, and, and we're we're you can tell we're almost finished. And you can tell it's the it's the neatest thing. Instead of the travel channel coming in and doing it fast and dirty, we just get to tell our stories. 
Yeah, and I really much. see a connection. I, I before we wrap this up, I was just like, I really see a connection. Look at this. Oh yeah, there's that. Now picture. where's yeah. the picture? I got Did you already that. put I it got back. That. I got that from. Uh, okay. From. Uh, Matt Warner's daughter Joyce. And and there I have it in my me. book, right? This whole thing. And this yeah. and and probably somebody put this on the internet before you bought that. Don't this one, well, this one came from the family of Joyce this Warner, is so the I don't original, know. I assume it came with it. I have got several of them. That, and there's no copyrights on any of this. I, no. I have every right to put that. This one here is one you you hadn't seen, and I hadn't yeah. seen it before either. I got that from. And this is actually written on the back. I don't think that's been copied before. But it says they're the four horsemen. <laughs> but there's Ann Bassett and Josie Bassett and a couple other women on there. They call themselves the four horsemen. Uh -huh. So they were friends of Butch. And, uh, right. And, uh, and they then were, they this, were is, this is a picture of her real home that's been Josie Bassett's in Vernal, mm -hmm. Utah, has been turned into a museum. Now, I've never been out there. Is that right? I didn't know have it was you museum. been there? No, I haven't. And everybody keeps saying that. So here are these stories. They're floating around. Brent gets the original pictures. I visit my neighbor, and here's a side story by Marilyn Grace, Christmas time, 2009. Yeah. I visited with my neighbor, Farron Moon, who lived in Vernal, Utah. He was seven years old when he met Josie Bassett. He said his mother had invited ten women over for a quilting party. Josie was among the ladies. My mother said, Josie, how come you've had so many husbands? Josie married five men that are buried in her land in Vernal. <laughs> One may have mysteriously vanished. Josie wasn't saying a thing if you get my drift. Mm -hmm. Josie said that all these reports, which are reporters, come to say that she poisoned her husbands. She said she like didn't widow. poison them, <laughs> but she didn't say she didn't kill them. <laughs> yeah. Josie told all the ladies at the party... And my neighbor heard Josie's response as to why she had so many husbands. Well, when you get in the habit of marrying sons of bitches, it's hard to break the habit. <laughs> well, that's fine. You see what, yeah. what we're doing here? Yeah. Well, Stories that, are, that have not history. been written down. Now they're written down. They're in a book. We've recorded history. These are life lessons. Well, just like trying to help you with your your books. I, I was counting yeah. the other day going you, over you the last 30 years. All those letters yeah. are, are from you, but I think there's well years over, ago. Years I, I think ago. I can count well over 300, 300 books that I help with, <laughs> with other people that have my well, stuff. Well, do you get you know? copies? Because I gave you copies. Well, some do and some don't. There was one on the, yeah, you've been great about it. Yeah. I've had uh, some, I, I got one on the uh, Novel Legion that the guy promised me a copy, didn't, but I found it, and he used my, you know, uh, a document of Joseph Smith. Yeah. But I'm just grateful to get it. You know, I was, I'm yeah. grateful to see that this stuff is getting used. And, um, but, you know. I'm just amazed that you have taken the time to be literally gathering all this stuff. You must have spent, like I said, I really admire your wife, because well, you, you find something, and you got to have it. Yeah. And yeah, you, just, you just come up with the money. And you figure it well, out. Well, one way or the other, or if I have to to um, um, trade or some other thing, I'll yeah, do that. So, but the uh, point is, is that uh, you, we're all making a mosaic in life. Mine's a collection, so I've been trying to fill in the holes. You know. Yeah. Uh, there was a uh, the, the, you know, there's things uh, I don't collect as much anymore because things are too expensive. And frankly, I'm finding stuff I didn't know I had. So as I'm going through things. In collections I never really went through, I'm finding interesting things. For right. instance, uh, uh, just uh, two days ago, I found a postcard mm -hmm. uh, that was um, uh, it was written in 1910, mm -hmm. and it was a picture postcard of um, of Saltaire. You know? Oh yeah. Yeah. I remember. And, I, I uh, was Saltaire, a child going the old to Saltaire, Saltaire, and that's mm -hmm. actually where my grandparents first uh, first dance on the on the dance floor before they were mm -hmm. married. Was mm -hmm. that the old Saltaire? Mm -hmm. um, and uh, at any rate, it had an X above the, it had two towers out on the, the walking pier and then the big tower, the big building in the middle. And one of the towers I noticed had an X, an X on the top of it. Mm -hmm. I turned it over and the postcard was written by George Albert Smith, mm -hmm. later president of the church, but in 1910, a young apostle who was suffering from mental problems. He had a lot of mental problems early on. Mm -hmm. 
And the church had sent him, after he was called as an apostle, they'd sent him, he was called about 1906. They sent him down in 1907 to a home they had down in Santa Monica to rest at. And he was there for a while. I uh, had a famous dream, you know, when he was in southern Utah for a while about his namesake grandfather. But what have you done with my name? You know, he used to tell that story. Hmm. And he said he'd done nothing to, you know, harm his name. And that was the way the dream went. But in 1910, I didn't realize he was, he was the brethren who put him in this tower out at, uh, at Salt Air. And he marked it with an X. He wrote this note on the back to his doctor who was in Springville, Dr. Boyer. And he said, this is where I'm spending my days. The, uh, the sea air is helping me, you know. Aww. And uh, they put him out there in this thing. I don't know how long he was there. I, I've got a meeting with the uh, Church Historical Library on Wednesday all day. We're, they're digitizing things again. They're our fourth day this, uh, this year. And uh, I'm going to show them that because I think it's cool. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if they ever knew he was put out there. You know? <laughs> or they have a metal problem. Or, 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 put you out here. Yeah, or an or back in 1910. Anyway, um, you, you know, I just found that over the weekend, and the fact is there's new things like that all, all the time. I really don't need to collect anymore. I, just need, <laughs> I need to go through and find out what we've collected. And, you know? and my, wish, <laughs> I, my wish for this collab, we've been collaborating. I yeah. think it was mm -hmm. Bill Benson is actually the one that introduced me, and, and mm -hmm. Bill won't talk to me anymore because right. he doesn't like well, Bill's him. a friend, yeah. Bill's a friend of yours, but... He, he won't talk to me because he wants me to leave Butch alone. And we we really believe that those two bones mm -hmm. are his. And what are the odds? In 2012, they have Plestini. Just a few years ago, Dr. Mark Perlin, a genius, is, is separating you from the profile with computers. Mm -hmm. we, we, yeah, we, that's great. I mean, we're talking 10 times greater oh, sure. is what we have. Mm -hmm. uh, we have this one piece. Yet we can't tell anybody. If anybody steals our thunder, yeah. we just, all the 22 years of research could have gone to Kristoff. You see what I'm saying? He was after me mm -hmm. like a vengeance. And I'm well, just, on the positive side, it showed it. The positive side was interest. it moved it faster. Yeah, moved things, and, yeah. And they gave, I was the first person to ever get paid. And I said, I sell books and That's I sell great. shares for a living mm -hmm. and you have to pay me. And half of the eight that I asked for 14, they gave me eight. They knew they didn't have a show without me. They apologized sure. for everything being cut out. And they offered me the, the History mm -hmm. Channel, and I pitched for Hitler. And my hope is that with this collaboration, is Brent, I, you aren't Brent Ashworth without your collection. What would you do if you sold your whole collection? Yeah, well, I'm not, I'm not quite there yet, so I'm yeah. Sorry. So Not what? Quite dead yet. My my dream, <laughs> my dream's coming true. My dream is to own my own production company, to yeah. stand up at trolley theaters, or even in Little Penguin, Utah, and sure. say, "Welcome to our show." Right. The independent films can make be made for a million oh, and right. make yeah. two hundred million, and get mm -hmm. you a museum because yeah. you deserve that. Oh, it'd be nice to have it. So museums. Would not be for me. It's for the, it's for the, yeah, the, and, the people and I will in the share. area. Yeah, it's I, for, I already am sharing. I, I realize early on that I can't own these things forever. I no. just gather them together, and uh, but they need to be put someplace where yeah. future kids, future after we're gone, somebody can come and, and right. still see them and use them. Because our history is getting rewritten every day, and most of it's doesn't. Uh, most of it's not correct. We will be rewriting history to say they yeah. didn't die in Bolivia. Absolutely. And, and then we have this whole team that you've mm -hmm. never met them, and we'll meet them when we all go on the, the Colin Ray and mm -hmm. the Wild Bunch cruise. And, and I really want to go on the getaway. I've already had my own Unsolved Mystery Cruise, January 16th of 2016, because I had four books then. Now we got 20. Now we got a couple of more. <laughs> yeah, there's more because to work on. If, if we don't do it, who's mm -hmm. going to do it? That's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you don't pull those out, there's a lot of stories that need to be um, told. You said you said, oh, you saw your cover of uh, Admiral Burke.